Hi everyone, it was Dr. Janelle Kim and Craig Nandu with the Experts. We're here at Beauty Connect and I am so excited to talk to Akshay Talati, who is the VP or Head of Product Development at Hoop. And he next year, he's going to be the President of the Society of Cosmetic Chemists, which is a really huge accomplishment, okay? We've known about all the things for many decades. So please tell us a bit about your sponsorship. Um, so by education, I'm a pharmacist. Okay. That's... I started in the industry doing topical pharmaceutical products. Right. And then jumped into cosmetic. My first job was at Estee Lauder. Beautiful. And when I joined Estee Lauder, it was four brands. When I left them after 22 years, they grew from four brands to 35 brands. Oh, what an amazing uh, thing to see. And yeah. mostly my career was in uh, growing the brands Clinique and Estee Lauder. And um, internationally in India, China, Japan. And then I moved from Estee Lauder. I moved to actually LA uh, to work for Murad. Murad had just been acquired by um, Unilever. Yes. So I headed their entire R&D product development innovation. And then I, I came back to the East Coast for yes. L'Oreal. I yes. headed the skincare brands, 12 brands, um, Kiehl's, L'Oreal, Garnier, SkinCeuticals. Yes. Um, and then finally now I'm with Goop. So I've been working for Goop for three years now. Part of my um, work for Goop is um, growing them into other categories like skincare, makeup, hair care, supplement, sexual wellness. Mm, absolutely love that. All of those yeah. categories are huge and certainly growing. And so, okay. What do you feel when you go, before we forget and move on to all the amazing things about your life or what you do, you say that you help these companies to grow, these yeah. brands to grow. So what are some of the main things that you see, that you watch out for, that you feel, in fact, makes these brands grow? Yeah, so for me, is I'm more product development and innovation. So my job is mainly to create products which will be on the shelves 10 years down, 15 years, 20 years down. I am also looking for those bigger breakthrough innovation by taking inspiration from other industries, like from food industry, from um, from the automobile industry, from the paint industry. So taking the ideation from there yes. and converting into products um, or taking even micro trends. Like people only focus on the macro trends like, oh, this ashwagandha is yes. pop right. popular or ginseng is popular or turmeric. But people are not looking at that little tiny mushroom growing in Haiti or some remote part of the uh, villages in India, China, Japan. So the, my job is to create that bigger innovation. Absolutely. I absolutely love it. And, and making the current products better also. Yes, yes. One of the things that I've talked about for a long time, and I'm just going to go out of the limb and have a feeling that we're going to agree, is that also you can have a, such an incredible ingredient, but it's also in that formulation. Not just to make the formula stable and smell good and look pretty, but also in the effectiveness. And that is something I am known to talk about. And so I'm going to take my chance here to see how you feel about that as well. Yeah, so look, I've been in the industry 30 years and I strongly, strongly believe that I would say most of the efficacy comes out from the base. Yes. Well, how, to, how to create and design the formula. So there are a lot of hero ingredients in the base. Glycerin, hyaluronic acid, um, the oils, the esters, the, yeah. the combination of them. And then, of course, you use the tried and tested ingredients, the retinols, the niacinamide, the white vitamin C. They work for a reason and they, sure. that's why it keeps on coming back. And of course, you have to modernize the formulas with current technology. You are using biotechnology or you're using adaptogens. Right. And so you have to mix it all together. I think the common, I get this question all the time in a lot of brands and startups come to me. Oh, I have the best exciting new thing. So my first question to them is, being new does not mean it's better. That's right. Being new is just, right, so it's. Uh, well, you're talking. I'm ninth generation. Uh, yeah. yeah. So a lot of times, a lot of times, you know, uh, it's presented as new. Yes, you need the innovation, you need the disruption Great. to be relevant in the market. But just because it's new doesn't mean it's. Thank you. It has to have purpose. Why are we using this, and what is the what right. problem are we going to solve? Right. Because especially nowadays, it seems to be a theme in my interviews for the second, for the third season, is that, you know, time and time again, people have these ideas. But again, you have to have purpose. You have to have a reason for, for it. Performance. Then yep. only people will come back to buy the product. Long you time. can you can do the first sale 
by promoting you can do paid advertisements on uh, social media they will buy it once but if it yep. doesn't work it's not sen- sensorially appealing people are not going to come back to buy it absolutely yeah. so it has to work for the longevity yeah, absolutely because because consumers are so much more people yeah. human beings are so much more aware and educated Thank- thankfully yeah. you know many of us we've been on this kind of path and- no uh, consumers nowadays they want full disclosure yes. transparency absolutely um not right or wrong they are bombarded with a lot of false information also but they do want the information so it's our job to educate them correctly absolutely. absolutely i was going to ask you actually when you t- when you talk about your formulation experience being an Estee Lauder yeah. giant you know global yeah. conglomerate and then moving to a company like goo yeah. which is now becoming quite big yes. but it hasn't always been that way yeah. How do you formulate differently? What are the processes like testing even, for example? Um, you know, what's a, what's a life cycle for a product to hit market and things like that? Yeah, so people will think that it's very different. And, but from an insider, from Goop, it's no different. My timeline at Goop is still 18 months. Yes. Almost similar to a multinational. Yes. Um, the quality of the products that I create, the formulation standards, the process is still the same. Yes. The only, I would say, the difference is that uh, we use a lot of outside contractors to create the ideation. Like, you know, it will be my idea. Somebody else is executing. Yes. I do not have the big like uh, infrastructure like a multinational L'Oreal and all but I think having the knowledge in the industry for the last 30 years I can still make that same educated decision by reading the scientific papers or getting the materials tested outside yes uh, getting the formulations tested we do all clinical testing we do full safety testing so it's the same standards yes that's great and how have has has Mokra impacted the way that you do things not really, because um, Goop was already compliant. Like, we yes. are already ahead of the game. It was just the registration that we had to do on-site in their portal. But other, otherwise, right. we, we used uh, better manufacturers. Or, I mean, everything was already compliant. Yeah. Right. Test the right. Yeah, when you do things correctly yeah. from the start. Of course. And we see it with smaller brands. You know, there's a lot that's coming down the, the pike in terms of what you have to do in terms of safety, efficacy, and things like that which is actually not that cumbersome for a, a company that's established like yours, but it is something to be aware of because um, if you're not compliant, obviously you're going to be in violation of the FDA and you don't want uh, that to happen. But yes, you don't Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of things. So you can do the minimal to launch a product, but then you also want to do more, So which is what we do. We do a full consumer safety. We do a yes. consumer, like you do not require, you, you can just launch a product by just doing a microbiology testing and uh, uh, yeah. RIPT, RIPT right. testing, uh, patch testing. And that's it. But Great. we do everything. We do similar standards through a multinational. Yes, I think that's beautiful. And something to note that, you know, there are steps toward to to this process. If you're starting out, if you're even mid-range, then you start to grow. There are ways that you can go about it kind of yeah. based on where you're standing. Yeah. And that's really important. And that is why you go to the experts who know what they're doing so you don't get lost on this path and have more anxiety than you need because then you're going to have to take more of the supplements and all the things, which could be good. But anyways... Actually, real quick, I just want to understand. Yeah. So you, so you, when you were a little boy, is this what you thought you would do? Uh, I always love this question. No. Did you, like, one day I'm going no. to work? Uh, this is a story I do tell, though. <laughs> okay, good. I'm a, I I'm a third-generation pharmacist, and my son is a fourth-generation. Oh. It was my grandfather, my father, pharmacist. Love. And although I, do, I did want to become a medical doctor, you know, I you wanted do. to go into medicine, but sort of the yeah. family yeah. heritage threw into pharmacy. But yes. anyway, cosmetic... Yeah. Not in a dream. I never, never ever thought that I would be doing cosmetics. Right. An interesting thing. And now you're going to be the president. So if we can just touch on that yeah. for a moment so people understand what this is, because not we know what this is, the Society of Cosmetic Chemists. But tell us a bit about it, because that's so special. Yeah. So uh, Society of Cosmetic Chemists, uh, it will be the 80th year next yes. year that is in ex- existence in the U.S. Uh, it is spread out across the country. We have about six, almost close to 6,000 members. Yes. Uh, we do a lot of the shows, uh, the scientific uh, literature. Uh, we give uh, opportunity for students, right. scientists, companies to showcase their science, the literature, uh, a lot of mentoring. Yes. Um, we are doing a lot of programs for next gen. So I'm, I'm part of the mentoring program. I guide a lot of students, a lot of startup brands also. So I give a lot of uh, guidance or mentorship to startup brands. Uh, yeah, so 
We are going, our annual function is going to be here in LA in December. I'm pretty sure I spoke, I had the honor of speaking at one of them. Or in one of the yeah. chapters, yeah. right? Yeah, so if any of the audience, uh, yeah. your uh, viewers, or uh, they want to jo uh, come, uh, it will be in LA in that's December. Beautiful, in December, LA yeah. in December. I think I'm actually home, so yeah. that's amazing. But anyways, we are so grateful for your insight, for all that you do. I can tell that you are very authentic. And um, yes, I'm really, really grateful. So thank you. Formulation is the foundation. Yes. Oh, I like that, Craig. You just yeah. came up with that on the spot. I did. That's bad. Okay. The product has to be a perfect mix, right? You know, as. Yes, pun intended. Yeah. Step.